If you can't talk to each other, then you shouldn't be together. I firmly believe that because the reality is that communication is key in any relationship. And if you're going to have happiness and success, you two have to be on the same page. You have to be able to talk to each other, express yourselves to each other, because if not, it causes all kinds of problems. And the reality is, the unfortunate reality is that many relationships are going through this. Whether you're in one right now or you are hoping to get into one, you have to be mindful and aware of the fact that a lot of men struggle with opening up. That's just the unfortunate truth. Now, one of the reasons, of course, I think we most of us will agree, if not all, men are not raised to be very expressive emotionally, all right? Men are told to suck it up, to deal with it, and they bottle up their emotions and they don't, don't know how to process and handle them properly. Now, there are some people out there who believe, okay, so we need, we need to encourage our young men to open up and express themselves. Yes, yes, but to a certain extent, and what I mean to a certain extent is, it is one thing to express how you feel and remain calm and, and gain control of your emotions rather than to allow yourself to be an emotional wreck while you're expressing yourself, all right? Just throwing that out there, whole nother discussion. Let's get back to the grown man, though. He's already grown, he's struggling, and again, you as a woman have to be mindful of what role do you play in his ability to, or his willingness to open up to you. Now, of course, there's a big point I have to make at the very end. Just listen to the whole thing, because I have to explain this one big point. But let's start with some of the other things. So when you show him that you will not throw things back in his face, he can start to open up to you. If you scour the internet and you see any videos or discussions about men communicating and opening up, you will constantly see men complain about or point out the fact that they cannot trust women to not use those moments against them. That they will now, again, throw it back in their face. They will, they will judge them, look down on them, all kinds of issues. And because of this, men are shutting down. Now, I am not a believer that this is a healthy way to, to handle this on the men's side. I still encourage a man to open up. And if she shows you she will throw it back in your face, that just shows you can't be with this woman. All right. So the man can't expose what he's dealing with unless he's willing to open up. But also because it's, it's, it's unfair to the woman who is willing to listen and not throw it back in his face for him to just shut down. Regardless of that, the fact remains that many men hold back for this reason. So as a woman, one, let me say this. Everything I'm about to mention on this list is things you can apply with anyone, friends, family, your children. This is going to help anyone in your life be more willing to talk to you and open up more, okay? So understand that you, 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 can't, you can't just make this about, well, he's a grown man. He should be able to do this on his own. Why do I need to do anything? No, because flip it for a second. If you felt like every time you opened up, your man threw it back in your face, well, you're going to think twice too. You might talk to your friends, you might talk to other individuals, but confiding in him will get less and less because of the way that he handles it. So there, again, there is still a role that you play in this dynamic. And this throwing things back in the face is just, it's a huge, again, if you were to poll men, I guarantee this would be one of the number one reasons why a man will tell you why they don't open up to a woman, all right? So be mindful of that. And, and what I want to elaborate on more is this. You've really got to practice this always in your life. You, you have to be aware and be willing to hold yourself accountable when you do this to anyone. Because the reality is that if you have a habit of throwing things back in people's faces, again, friends, family, kids, whoever, it will be very difficult for you to not do it to the man that you're with. Plain and simple. Not to mention, if, if, if you say, well, I've been dating this man 
And he hasn't even given me the opportunity to show him I won't throw it back in his face. Well, guess what? He is paying attention to what you do with other people too. So if he has witnessed or heard of, whether it be on the phone, whether it be in person, that you took information and threw it back, now he's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna put myself in that position. Hell no, nah. like, I'm not even gonna go there. He now sees he cannot trust you in that way. So please be aware you're being watched. <laughs> like, the, the, the eyes are on you. And if you don't learn how to manage this in general, you're going to have a problem. So a great thing for you to do to start practicing this is letting the people you love, letting the people you're cool with, be aware that you're trying to work on this. And that if you ever do it, they are allowed to call you out and check you on it. All right. You've got to give them permission to put you in your place, so to speak, all right, in that moment, in a loving way, of course, not attacking you with it, but letting you know, hey, you told me to let you know about this, you're doing it right now, so that you can start to become more aware. And when they check you, don't fight it, don't resist it, accept it for what it is and say, you know what, I'm sorry, my apologies, and now, you know, get back to a more healthier uh, discussion or healthier expression with them. All right, so the next thing, if you do this, you can get him to open up emotionally a lot more, is using more humor in your discussions or being showing that you can be lighthearted, all right? So again, there's a, a lot of men who feel like, one, a lot of women don't know how to take a joke, okay? And, and in that, they, you know, especially in today's society, there's just, there's just become this environment where People are afraid to just say things even jokingly, all right? And you may say, well, okay, what does that have to do with opening up emotionally? Well, again, if you seem to be this very tense, on-edge person, can't take a joke, it becomes fearful to the other individual to trust how you will react to them telling you certain things, all right? And so now they become overly cautious. Your ability to interject humor into the discussion, it lowers the fences. When you can get people to laugh, they're more loose. They're more calm. Laughter is almost like liquor. <laughs> when, when, when you think about it, people are laughing and having a good time thing, they'll let more stuff come out because they're just, they're just, they're not overthinking it anymore. They're not all on edge and guarded anymore. May not be as strong as liquor, <laughs> but I'm saying it has the power to soften people up, all right? So now, it doesn't mean you need to learn how to be a comedian and make jokes or start writing a set of jokes that you can use when you're in conversations with a man. It just means learning how to lighten up, all right? Learning how to understand his humor, because also in you showing that you can understand and embrace his humor, that will also contribute to him feeling like he can talk to you about other things. Again, the more a man feels free around you, and this could be its own point, but we're going to include it in this. The more that he can feel like I can be myself, I can be free, the more he will expose himself to you. And expose might sound like a bad word, but you know what I mean? The more he may reveal, that's a better word, the more he may reveal himself to you. Now, again, do I think a man or a woman should be waiting for someone to essentially give them the permission or allow them to feel like they can reveal themselves? No, I, I, I want people to feel confident enough to come in showing their true selves. And again, determining if this person can embrace that and be in alignment with it or they're just the wrong person. But this is about what you can do to increase the chances of him opening up to allow yourself to have health, healthier relationships and healthier communication. So... Yes, the more you can allow him to feel relaxed and free around you, joke around, all these things, that is going to help with him opening up emotionally. Okay, so let's move things along. And the next thing you can do that will get a man to open up to you emotionally is to show him you are not overly sensitive. Now, this one's a little tricky because some of you are just very sensitive. I mean, it's not, it's not, I, can't, I don't want you to fake being who you are, right? If you're a very sensitive person, you're a very sensitive person. And again, 
I would encourage any man to learn the sensitivities of his woman and understand how to work with that. However, I do think that sometimes you have individuals or two people trying to come together whose level of sensitivity and level of uh, open-mindedness, we're going to use the word, right, clashes. And it's hard for them to come together because maybe it could, it could happen on either way. The man, one being very sensitive or the woman being very sensitive. But let's go with the woman being very sensitive. And this man talks very roughly. He's a little more sharp with his tongue, all these things. Now, again, he should learn to soften it up. But I have seen situations where even in him softening it up, this woman is quick to take everything personally, all right? And be and quick to be offended. So there is a role. So, so though I think some people may be more sensitive than others, and, and some people are more blunt than others, both have improvements to make on both sides. And then when they can get to that improved state, then we can evaluate, okay, can we actually make this work? But going back to the point of you being very sensitive and what that does to his, his willingness to open up to you, sometimes men don't tell you the truth and aren't open with you because they're afraid to hurt your feelings. All right. Again, I am not using that to validate or to excuse a man omitting information or even flat out lying. I'm explaining to you what happens, why it happens. All right. Sometimes the man just feels like if I tell her, she's going to start crying. She's going to be a mess. And, and to him, it's like, I know I can get this situation handled. So why even open her up to that? Because she can't handle it emotionally. But then unfortunately, let's just say he takes that route. It comes out later that, you know, he held this information back for you. Even if he handled it, you may feel some kind of way. But you have to understand that, yes, if you don't show an, a, an ability, or at least an improved ability to handle what he has to give you, even when it's a harsh truth. And when I say harsh truth, I don't mean in his delivery. I mean in the reality of it. All right. Because sometimes the reality of it is something that you just don't like that may hurt your feelings. But it's not he's not saying it to you to hurt your feelings. He's not saying it to you to, to make you feel some kind of way. You have to be able to differentiate that. You have to be able to understand, okay, this man is trying to include me. He's trying to respect my feelings and my request to be told about situations. He's trying to keep the lines of communication wide open. I have to show him that I can handle this and not, again, internalize. So I think it's very important for those of you who can acknowledge that maybe you're very sensitive or at the very least, you take things personally or you're quick to take things personally. You got to learn to stop that. that. That right there is something that is not a personality trait. That is a mindset shift. That's something that you have to change through being conscious and aware of it and saying, listen, this is not always about me. It's not, it, it, you know, you have to be able to separate yourself from the situation in the sense of what's really going on here and be able to not let your emotions get the best of you. It's the same way where sometimes I'll do a video. No, I'm going to be very honest. I have recently, Lord forgive me, I have recently, and this is no offense to the person that they realize who I'm talking about. A person received one of my emails and it had a certain title and they took it personally like like i'm speaking directly to them and in my head i'm like i said this to everybody <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not speaking to any specific person I, and i can understand if i have to be even better with how i use my words and, and what could trigger people i'll take accountability for that but to take it so personally like it was a direct attack that i aimed at you specifically it's like so if you're doing that with me and we don't even talk in person, I'm online. What are you doing with the guy who's in front of your face? What are you doing? What are you doing in your romantic relations where you're more emotionally invested? You see what I'm saying? You've got to be able to recognize when no, no, take a step back, take a deep breath. And when you show him you're not quick to be offended and quick to be sensitive about it, 
you make it easier for him to open up. All right, so now the next thing you can do to get a man to open up emotionally, and this one is so near and dear to my heart because I'm always saying it, and I believe wholeheartedly in the power of it. And that's when you can show him that you can speak to him in a positive and loving manner. So I'm sure that some of y'all thinking, well, I, I speak like that. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. This time I'm aiming this one right at whoever the shoe fits for, all right? <laughs> no, you don't. You don't speak as positive and loving as you think. Here's what I have seen in all my years of doing this, all right? And this can, again, this can happen in all kinds of situations with all kinds of people. But a lot of women in relationships or while they're dating a man, you may be speaking calmly. You may not be cursing him out. But your energy and attitude is negative. It's stank. All right? Stank. That's what it is, okay? And that man... It's, it's, it's almost this passive-aggressive energy. And, and, you, and you know what's worse about passive-aggressiveness? It's almost like you know they're attacking you with this negative energy, but if you dare say something, it's like, what do you mean? I'm talking to you calm. I'm fine. You're the one that's tripping. You're having a problem. And you want to you gaslight them like they're crazy. No. Be real with yourself. How are you coming to the table? What's the energy that you're projecting in this discussion? So speaking to a man in a positive and loving manner starts with checking your spirit and energy first, all right? And a couple things you can consider or that will help you with doing that better is one, do not speak to him in the moment of anger, all right? It's going to be very difficult for you as a human being, to check yourself and keep yourself properly contained if you're holding on to so much anger and, and this thing just happened. It is much better for you to step away for a little while, take a deep breath, do whatever you have to do to kind of decompress. It may not get all the negative energy out of you, but it can get enough out so that you can come to the table with a better attitude and energy, all right? The second thing to, to do is, do not come into the discussion expecting negative, all right? You can be mentally prepared for negative. That doesn't mean you have to expect the negative. When you expect and project a negative outcome, you end up projecting a negative energy. So again, that man feels that and that makes him shut down. That makes him not even want to bother with this discussion. Have you ever talked to someone, and again, even though they may be acting calm, you feel like talking will be pointless right now. You can, you can sense that they've already made up their mind. They're not even open to the possibility that what they're thinking is not correct, all right? Now listen, there may be some situations where you feel certain or you have evidence or proof that something is wrong, and you know that's, that's different than you trying to gain a better understanding or find out what's going on, and you, again, jumping to your own conclusions and projecting those conclusions onto that man. It's not going to work, all right? So take a step away if you have to. Do not project onto him. Uh, and when I say take a step away, do not speak in a moment of anger. And then the third thing, real quick, and we'll get back to the point, pray before you speak, all right? You know people say think before you react or think before you speak? Pray before you speak. Pray before you react. That can help bring it back, bring it down a notch. Sometimes, again, your mind is taking you to a place that you don't need to go to, but your spirit can bring you back to where you need to be, all right? So when you know you're about to have a real discussion or something that has the potential to go left, pray before you go into it so that you will now have, again, the proper mindset and energy to have a more effective, productive discussion. And, when, and let me say this, it's hitting my spirit, so I feel the need to say it. Productive discussion doesn't mean that the end result will be what you want it to be. Meaning, I'm just gonna give an example. Let's just say you are hearing rumors this man is cheating and you confront him about it. And I know most of y'all are gonna say, well, why the hell do I need to approach it from a loving and positive manner? because you may be wrong, 
All right, but let's just say in this situation, you heard he's cheating. You you come in with that loving and you you catch yourself, you pray, you come in calm, and it turns out he says, "Yes, I have been cheating." So here's the thing: it was still productive because you got the answer you needed. Well, you may not see it as the answer you needed, but you got the clarity. You you got the resolution. It hurts. It sucks. But there is no confusion going forward. However, you come in like a heat-seeking missile attacking, you actually increase the chances of him dodging the question, running from the situation, because now he's so afraid to acknowledge and admit what he's doing because he doesn't know what the hell's going to happen next. All right? Again, that calmness you come in with disarms the individual, and it makes them feel more, or it allows them to be more willing to, be, to speak and be honest about things, all right? So all that to say, positive and loving manner is huge. And again, when you can do that and when you can show the ability to master your energy, master your spirit, you're going to be able to get better conversations, better communication out of anyone. All right, so before we move on along to the next one, real quick, here is your chance to join my special coaching program. It's, uh, you can go to receivingmyblessings.com. In this program, you're going to have an uh, opportunity to get your personal questions answered by me twice a month, live Q&A calls. You're going to have modules on tapping into your feminine energy, healing from the past, hearing God more clearly, finding your purpose, a plethora of information that's going to make your life so much better and allow you to receive all the blessings that God has for you. So again, go to receivingmyblessings.com, click the link in the description or in the comment section. All right, so now let's keep things moving. And here's another big one that you can do that will uh, help a man open up emotionally is when you show him you're able to listen to understand and not listen to rebuttal, all right? So I'm sure, again, these, these things can apply to everybody. And let me say this. I, I meant to say it earlier, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things that I've already mentioned on this list and, and a few more I have to tell you about where you're going to say, well, these men are doing this. This man is doing that. Granted, right? And my response to you will be, well, if he is not willing to correct that behavior, why are you still with him? Why are you still dating him? There's no point there. I hold true to what I said in the beginning. If you guys cannot talk to each other, you guys should not be together, right? But you can't continue to listen to this video focused on what he is or isn't doing until you can say, I'm doing what I need to do. So I want you just to continue to focus on how you can do your part. So now when you are showing the example of healthy communication and he is still not making any corrections, oh, then there's absolutely without a doubt, this ain't going to work. Keep it moving. All right. But to get back to the point, listening to understand, not rebuttal. The unfortunate reality is that, again, here's another one where if you surveyed men, this would be a very popular complaint where they feel like their partners are just listening so that they can now give their rebuttal, give their two cents. They're not actually considering what the man is saying. They're not trying to understand where their man is coming from. All right. And many times for a lot of women, I'm not going to say for all, but for a lot of women, this happens because you are letting your emotions get the best of you. You are not listening from your logical mind. You are listening from your emotional side. And those emotions are being triggered when you don't hear what you like, or those emotions are being triggered when you hear something you disagree with. Or hell, you might be holding on to something that hasn't even been properly addressed. And so now you already come into this discussion ready to fight, all right? ready to shut down whatever he has to say because you still feel some kind of way about some other thing that he did that had not been properly addressed. But all you're doing is now creating or continuing the cycle of unhealthy communication. And you got to show that you can hear him and understand him. A perfect example, I've given this story before where uh, I know some people, they had went to a counselor. It was a couple. And the, the therapist asked the, the, the woman, she, well, she asked the man, all right, tell your partner how you feel. 
All right, so the man goes on and expresses himself, goes on for however many minutes. Then she looks at the woman and she says, all right, repeat what he just said. And this is the, the woman told me this story. So this came from her mouth. She says they spent the next hour without her being able to say what he said. It was more like, well, he meant this or this is what he's trying to say. It was her interpreting, not accepting the words coming out of his mouth. All right. It was her trying to decode things rather than just taking him for his word. And I have to say this. Part of the reason why a lot of women do this, and you may be one of those women, is because sometimes y'all speak in code, <laughs> right? Because sometimes y'all speak in a way that you want the man to be able to figure it out and understand. Because your brains work that way in the sense that you, you can read between the lines. You, you can pick up on the details. You're, you're breaking stuff down, right? But for him, it, men are just more simple. It's just, this is what it is. Now, I know some of you will say, well, nah, because there's plenty of men who lie. And all. That's a different story. But when a man's trying to be open and communicate with his partner, what he's saying is what he's saying. All right? But once you show an unwillingness to accept his words for what they are, he stops speaking at all. So you've got to be willing to catch yourself if you are doing that and really like, again, remove the emotion as much as possible when the man is speaking to you and really just focusing on listening and capturing all the words to the point where if you are confused about something, do not make an assumption, ask a question. So rather than assuming what I think you mean or I think you're trying to say, no, 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 no. Don't think what they're trying to do anything. Ask him, is this what you mean? What is this? What, what, can you give me more information on this? Perfect example, I recently uh, received a message online, a woman asking me to interpret this guy saying, I make, you're my top priority, right? And she says, well, what does this mean? And I'm like, listen, and she said, because I don't want to scare him off by like digging further. And I said, listen, if he's serious about you, he's not going to be scared off by you trying to gain more clarity on the situation. But what a lot of women do is they'll take that text message, they'll go ask for their friends, <laughs> all right? They'll, maybe they have some guy friend that they got a pass. They're asking everyone, and then they're coming to all these different things that only drive you crazy because you're throwing all these different scenarios in your head. Stop. Just ask the man. Just ask him, what did you mean by that? Can you I, say to him, I don't want to jump to a conclusion. Help me understand this part better. And that's it. And he will appreciate that because, again, you're doing something that lessens the confusion and not jumping to conclusions and allowing him to clarify for himself. <laughs> all right. So the next one, and I keep saying, like, this is the big one. This, this is another big one. All right? I think they're all big. They're all important. But the other one um, that helps big time is when you can show him, you will not lose respect for him. All right. So again, another one of those things you hear men talk about, there are so many men who refuse, who, who live by the idea you should not tell a woman everything or be vulnerable because of the issue of she will not respect you the same, all right? That she will look down on you and it's a wrap from there. The, the relationship is downhill from there. Now, I disagree because as I mentioned earlier, I believe that the man should be open and express himself because then he can expose what kind of woman he's dealing with. But also I disagree because I'm a believer that the issue is not the moment. The issue is if the man dwells in the moment or overcomes the moment. All right. So if the man has a moment of weakness, I do think everyone understands that this happens in life. It's a matter of how it's handled. If he, if he turns into a complainer and whining and self-pity and victim, victim mindset and does nothing to help himself, then yeah, I do believe that he's going to lose respect. But I believe he can overcome that if he shows her I can bounce back from this and, and I can, you know, get to work and do what's necessary to make things better. But that doesn't change the fact that this is still a huge fear of the man. 
And for the woman, for you, you've got to be so care. I, I, I already hear some of y'all saying, why we got to baby these men and their emotions? Stop with that, all right? We have to be mindful of each other's emotions, men and women, if we want to have a successful relationship. But this is so important because, again, men need respect in their relationships. And so you have to make sure you don't, you don't, I have to say, you don't question his manhood because that happens. You can't say, oh, you act like a little bee. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. All right. Or, 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 or you ain't no real man. Oh, don't, don't, don't say those types of things. Don't question or undermine his manhood. If you got to go to those levels of, 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 vitriol of, of, of wickedness coming out of your mouth, <laughs> then just leave the relationship. Because it's going to go... You, so the same way, you know, you losing respect for him as far as your ability to love him goes downhill after that. Uh, and that's what his fear is. If you use those kind of words and, and, and question his manhood and go against him in that kind of way, his ability to be confident and feel secure around you is going to be severely hindered. Because now in the back of his head, he's got to worry about how you're looking at him now. He now has to question if you revere him in that way, and that can create insecurities and cause all kinds of problems. So as a woman, you have to be very mindful of this. You want to do everything it takes to show him. If anything, not only do you want to avoid these types of words and, and statements, you want to use statements that show him you still respect him and love him and believe in him. So after he has those moments, you have to still say, I believe in you. I know you can handle this. Speak life into that man, not beat him while he's down. And, and as I mentioned earlier, don't throw it back in his face. No, tell him, I, say, I, I, I respect you. I respect that you allowed yourself to have that moment with me. This will make him feel like, okay, this is safe here. Safe in the sense that I can open up and be more vulnerable with this woman. So be mindful of that, master that, and you're going to see that take you a long way. All right, and last but not least, the other thing you can do to get a man to open up emotionally to you is to show him that you can be open and transparent with him as well. So I always say, listen, you, you can't complain about people lying if you're going to lie yourself. You can't get people to be open if you're not going to be open yourself. You can't get people to be, you, hell, you can't get people to go get therapy and heal if you won't go get therapy and heal yourself. All right. You have to set the example of what, this is one of those things where you got to give what you want in return. Because in you letting your walls down, it helps him feel safer in letting his walls down. Now, again, if I was speaking to men, I would tell him the same thing in reverse. That his willingness to be vulnerable will help the woman in her willingness to be vulnerable and less scared because women have their own fears as well. But this is about you today. <laughs> and, and the fact remains that, yes, you... You've got to make sure that you're not just opening up to the level that you feel comfortable with, but you're opening up at the level that he needs from you. Because there's a lot of relationships that I've seen where the woman feels like I'm doing my part. But when you speak to the man, he's still complaining about how closed off she is, how he doesn't feel like she shares things with him, how he feels like he has to pull teeth to get things out of the woman, right? So what, what, what's really being said is that she feels like she's, she's operating at the level that she feels comfortable at, but not at the level that is necessary to, to gain positive results in this relationship and pour into each other. So vulnerability is not simply about how far do I want to take it, it's how far do you need for me to take it? How much do we need to be pouring into each other in all these different ways so that we can feel like we're a team. We're a team that can share all these moments together. We're a team that can, if it means crying together, rejoicing together, celebrating, whatever the case may be, we can do that together because we know we have each other's back. It's safe here. We love and respect each other. And it's those types of things 
that will allow us to have an amazing, successful relationship. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to watch this one over here on the seven signs you're dealing with an emotionally broken man. That had nothing to do with me specifically. And they seem to be functioning right now. It's like someone being a functioning alcoholic. They're still an alcoholic.